In this video we will ma make our first 2D drawing. We uh, click on new, new drawing and select drawing, OK and we select A4 and click OK. To place a view on this drawing you have to go to the view tab on the Fluent Ribbon Bar. Click that tab and then we select standard view and in this dialog box you can do some changes but we will look for a part to make a drawing and uh, well there's no part there we click on browse click browse button and in the pupil folder we find sterling engine but there's only the engine and no separate parts so to make a drawing on separate part we have to do like this we click cancel and cancel there and we go to open, select that button and uh, select Sterling Engine because we want to do some changes in the 3D scene. Click open. So now we will save some parts from this engine to the hard drive so that we can do some drawings of those parts. So first we will select this engine and we are, can also select it from the scene browser if we want. And then we go to Assembly tab, select the Assembly tab, and only in Operations group we find Save as Part Assembly. We select that button, click that button, and by default it gets the name Cylinder because it has that name in the scene browser. So we click on Save, we click Save button, and now it's it's saved on the on the hard drive and we can see that if we click the plus sign on cylinder and we'll see a link to the hard drive that there is a part saved on the hard drive this means that if you do some changes in this 3d scene you will uh, for example on the on the cylinder you will see that uh, those changes in that part on the hard drive and if you do some changes uh, in that part on the hard drive, uh, you will see the changes uh, in this 3D scene on the engine. So it works like that when they are linked. If you want to save several parts to the hard drive, you don't have to save them one by one. Uh, you can save several of them at the same time. In this case, we will save uh, the crane case and we control select next one the bearing bracket because we have already saved the cylinder and then the bearing holder and flywheel control select and then we go to save all as external this means that the, these four parts will be saved on the hard drive but if you want to say if you deselect all and then click save all as external all parts will be saved as separate parts on the hard drive even screws and washers but if I select some parts in the, in the scene browser and then click save all as external, only the, the selected parts will be saved on the hard drive. So we click this button and now we want to store those files, save this file in the pupil folder and we click OK. It will only take a few seconds. Mm -hmm. So now it's finished. We click the plus sign and we will see that we have a, a path to the hard drive that we have an external linked file and also the bearing bracket and the bearing holder and the flywheel is the same we have a linked file so now we have now when we have made our savings we can start to, to make our drawings we close this scene the sterling engine click that button close and we got a question do you want to save because we have externally linked files yes if we don't we lose the link the links in in the scene click yes so and now we're back to our 2d drawing now we, we select the standard view button and we see our dialog box and we click browse to see our parts and now we see the the saved parts on, on the hard drive and we select the, the cylinder and click open and uh, now we can do some changes here in, the, in our dialog box and here you see the cylinder in current front view direction 
and we will use this front view direction as a as a front front view we select this button and, and with these buttons you can uh, uh, change the position of the front view so we get the right orientation of, of the view so you can rotate the view in that direction you want now uh, you select that one and uh, with this button you will rotate the view in that in that direction but it's hard to see when it's symmetrical mm -hmm. we rotate the cylinders so that we are in this position we see the cooling flanges uh, towards you and then we see the bracket behind that there's cooling flanges so that's uh, the right direction for us right now we select that and then we will also use a button view select that button and um, here you can select auto scale that's uh, selected by default and standard scale is a predefined scale so you can select if you want but in our case we will use auto scale to see how the program will will solve this problem and click OK and now we will place the views in the middle of the drawing like so well the views became too small so we select the front view and we will change the scale and we select this button click that button and we will uh, change to 2 to 1 and this works only in the front view because if we, if we select the bottom view we will see in the property browser that um, the scale is now in grey the, but if we select this button we can change the scale on the bottom view but we will use use front view scale so the bottom view will have the same scale and as the front view well we have placed our first two views on the drawing so we will continue with these views I see now I should have done a section view of the cylinder so I select the view and I delete it and um, before we do a section view we will put some center marks on the cylinder so we go to the annotation tab select the tab and center mark and we put a center mark on the cylinder in this circle and the holes like so so and we press escape to exit the command and now we can make a section view of the cylinder we select the view first the front view we go to view tab and section select that button and we do a horizontal section line and we click on the center center mark and now we have placed a, a section line uh, in the center of the cylinder we will also look at a staggered section line how we can use that we select that button and if you want a, st uh, a section line through that hole you can do that just uh, clicking in the center of that hole and then you can drag this um, handle so it snaps to the center mark and now you have a stagger line you have a section so you get a section view uh, from the center and through that hole but you can also delete this stagger line by selecting uh, the handle and then you click delete stagger select that button and uh, we got we got a, a straight section line and that's what we want we can also flip direction of the of the section uh, but we will use that one that direction and when we are ready so we just click ok apply and exit and we got a preview where we can place our section and we place it there and now when we have placed our section view it's time for us to add some dimensions to add dimension we go to a dimension group and we select smart dimension and with smart dimension you, you get a variety of, uh, of dimension tools such as horizontal and vertical radial and diameter to dimension and also uh, angle dimension so when we move the cursor over the view we'll say we see that the circles and lines and arcs uh, is uh, get highlighted in green that means that that's an allowable uh, attachment point so if we select this line we click this line and we got a measure of the whole line and later we will delete this measure because we don't need it uh, it's just for 
to show how it works. Well, if we move the cursor uh, over this arc, it will recognize that this is an arc. And if we move the cursor over this circle, it recognizes that this is a circle. If you want to put a dimension on the whole width of, uh, of the cylinder, you have to go to a snap point, and you find snap points in, uh, there, there and there, even, even in the cross section of the, the center marks. We click that snap point, and we go to the other side, and you could select this snap point, or you can select this line. If the first attachment point is a snap point, then you can select the line and you will get a horizontal dimension. So we select this line, we click that line, and we place the, the dimension there. I press escape and I select this dimension and delete it. So, and then I will move this uh, measure up a little bit, this dimension. And I pl place it there. And I will also adjust the line of the center mark just above the, the dimension. I will also move the other lines a little bit so it looks the same around the, the cylinder, like that. Hmm. Now, next step will be we, will, we select Smart Dimension again and we will put a, a dimension on this circle. When you see this circle highlighted in green, just select it, click that circle, and you get a diameter dimension and we select that one the hole inside the cylinder and we we'll also put a dimension on this arc a 32 millimeters as you remember we um, made this cylinder from a cylinder from the catalog and then we, we removed material from it and we put a dimension on the, on this hole and then we press escape and zoom in a bit we had to do some adjustments well, I want the dimension line go through the intersection of that hole, so we select this handle and we left drag and we see that it snaps to the midpoint of that arc and we drop it there and the, the dimension line go through the intersection. On this side, I want the, the measure horizontally, so we right click on the measure and then we click on, we select text format and on horizontal. And we know that we have four holes in the cylinder at, at the same size. So we can put in a text in, the, in this measure so that tells us that we have four holes. So we right click and go to text and we have prefix and postfix. We click, we, uh, we select postfix. And uh, here we can type in a postfix and we have already a prefix. We have a diameter symbol. And in postfix we type in parentheses x4 and then we click OK. And now we know that the four holes has the same size. Well, let's see now. Next step will be we go to the section view and we select Smart Dimension and we will put the dimension on the, this part of the cylinder, four millimeter. And then we will put the dimension on this distance. To align this dimension with the first one, you just move the cursor over the first dimension and you will see that it will snap to that dimension. Drop it there. And then we will measure this distance, that one. And to align this dimension with the other ones, on the other ones you just move the cursor over this dimension and it will snap when you see the green line. Then height dimension, we click that snap point and then we click that line, that line, and uh, we place the dimension there, drop it there, and then we press escape to exit the command, and we will also place a, a center line in the cylinder, so we will use the center line command. When you move the cursor inside the cylinder, you will see a, a red line that indicating that you, now you can place a, a center line if you want. You can also select that line, and the other line on the other side and get a center line but we will click in this uh, area and we get and we have a center line so and uh, now when we have dimensioned a part of this of the cylinder we will look at uh, the title block and uh, we'll use the window zoom command zoom in so we can see the title block and we double click included in uh, assembly and we type Sterling engine. I'll try to type it right. Mm -hmm. Sterling engine. Like so. 
and then we will change the scale with type right scale to column one that's the scale we choose when we put the views on the drawing there are more dimensions to add to this uh, cylinder to this drawing but um, this is a beginning and now we have seen how the smart dimension tool works so next step that's uh, we have to save our drawing click on save and in our pupil folder we the default name is cylinder that's okay I click save and um, we close this drawing and in next video we will uh, make a drawing of another part of the engine